Hi everyone, welcome to CAN TV Conversations. Today I will be speaking with Kelsey Marie Warner, who is a mental health advocate and TikTok star, about normalizing therapy. I want to warn viewers that there might be some sensitive information discussed during this conversation. Hi, Kelsey Marie. Hi, how are you? Great, fabulous. Thank you so much for joining us today. I have to start with asking, how did you get 440,000 followers on TikTok? <laughs> Um, I started making point of views. Point of views are very popular on TikTok. You know, you see people um, just making stories out of songs, that kind of thing. And I was thinking, what if I did that with mental health? I made it into a point of view to be more receptive to the audience I was trying to target. Um, this is a quote that I love where it says, if a child can't learn the way we teach, we should teach the way they learn. So I was thinking that if I did it the way we know they learn, we know they like this kind of content, then maybe it would be received better and I would be able to help more people that way. And it's done really well. Um, some of my videos have millions of views because of it. So it's been a really humbling and kind of mind blowing experience. <laughs> well, that, that is certainly awesome. And, and with that, such a large following, what are your kind of um, continued end all goals, intentions, having like such a big platform, now that you have that, is there any new way of thinking that you are having? Okay, so um, I'm definitely gonna continue with the coping mechanisms just because so many people know the signs of depression, they know the signs of anxiety, and a lot of people are diagnosed with it, but they don't really know what to do after that point. Sure, go to therapy, but what do I do when I'm at home and I'm struggling? So I'm going to continue with making um, videos about coping skills and then eventually i hope to write a book about it you know just like kind of like a big book of coping skills and you know continue educating that way i'm excited for that um have you personally experienced um or known someone that is going through something difficult that brought you to the mental health topic Yes, absolutely. I have struggled with depression since I was probably 12 years old. And um, there were several dark periods, particularly in my early teen years, that um, I experienced You know the things that I talk about. And um, as I grew up, the depression and anxiety just kind of morphed from like teen depression to postpartum depression, um, postpartum anxiety, that kind of thing, the things you know parents experience. And um, so yeah, lots of personal experience in that area. <laughs> and, and now that you are a parent, uh, do you have a special way that you try to inform your children regards self-love and importance of mental health? Yes, definitely. Um, so we, I go with like an age appropriate natural approach. So rather than like sitting down my kids every day and like, here's what we're gonna talk about. Um, I do it like moment by moment. So for example, my five-year-old, she has some temper tantrums because she's five, you know? And so um, what we do is she has a coping chart on the refrigerator and it has like things that she can do. She can pick a square. I'm gonna talk to a grown up right now or I'm going to take five deep breaths. I'm gonna read a book. I'm gonna listen to music. I'm gonna go outside. So she has every day when she's having a hard time, she knows she can go to the refrigerator and try this new coping skill. When, you know, when she's struggling. And so I, I like that approach just because it's age appropriate and um, it slowly educates her on basic coping skills. So when she gets older, she's already gonna have all these ideas of how she can get through the daily struggles or even larger ones that we experience in life. I've never heard of that technique. That's really interesting. Did, do you believe that the pandemic might have changed your perspective on mental health over the last year? Have you been making different kind of content due to that? Has anything changed? Um, yes, definitely for me, because with the pandemic, initially, I was happy we were home. It was nice to be home with my children and have my husband at home. But then those two weeks turned into months of being stuck in the house. You know, we couldn't my kids couldn't play with their friends, forget about gymnastics or even the grocery store, you know, everything changed so drastically. And I think it really amps up a lot of people's anxiety because there was so much unknown, like, are my, gonna, are my kids gonna get sick? You know, is it okay to go talk to the neighbor? Like, we don't really understand this, you know? And so I think it heightened it and had to bring more awareness because more people were experiencing, in my opinion, I think more people were experiencing anxiety and depression. So I feel like, it brought more awareness overall. 
and it helped me understand it more too because what I was going through in general was kind of amplified because of it. I hope that makes sense. No, it totally does. Do you believe that there, as we speak now, a negative stigma still on therapy and mental health here in the U.S.? Definitely. Um, a lot of my followers that message me or jump into my lives are afraid to ask for help, you know, from their spouse, from their parents, um, just to talk to people in general because they don't want to be seen as attention seeking um, or weak, you know. Um, in my own experience, you know, I was afraid I would be told that I just want attention or I just needed to suck it up and get over it. You know, push through, we're not gonna talk about this, you know, you'll get over it. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well that, that seems to be something we're working on here to in the U.S. to normalize. Is there anything that whoever's watching right now that you would like to tell um, for those who are struggling or might need just a word of encouragement? Life gets better. Uh, I know that when you are at your lowest, that it might seem like you're never gonna be happy again, or maybe you don't feel deserving of happiness. And um, just give it time and continue working on your coping skills and setting boundaries in your life. And eventually it will get better. And I know that a lot of people struggle with um, suicidal thoughts, ideation, that kind of thing. And I look back in my life and there were certainly times when I seriously considered ending it. And if I had done that, I wouldn't have, you know, my three beautiful children, my husband, all the, you know, the wonderful things that have happened wouldn't have. And so my message to most people is simply just keep holding on. It does get better. Wonderful. With some of your content, it's very powerful. You definitely kind of go in for the jugular on some of them. How, how has the response been, the feedback uh, with, with those particular videos? Okay, so um, every professional that I've spoken with, therapists, social workers, psychologists, because they follow me as well, it's been very positive. You know, they send their clients to my videos, say this person has really great ideas. So it's been very positive from them. Um, I do get some negative feedback just from like random people, people who say uh, they want attention, you know? <laughs> so people that just say, oh, that person wants attention. I don't care, get over yourself, that kind of thing. But for the most part, from the professional world, it's been very positive. That's great. And, and that kind of ties into the, the issues under pressures of social media. And it's interesting you chose a social media platform to, to discuss maybe issues that are aligned with that. Mm -hmm. I did. And um, it, was, it was kind of nerve wracking at first just because mental health is such a personal topic for me. Um, I, I was afraid to share my account with friends and family, afraid of what they would think of me. And even as a mother, because I feel like there's a lot of pressure as parents to like always be on, you know, you always have to be happy. You always have to be a good example. And um, you always have to look great. Like Instagram is like prime, you know, <laughs> to feel like, to make me feel like I'm uh, less than what I am. And it's only because we show the best of our lives on social media, you know, now that I have this amount of, you know, followers, and I feel like people have this, my followers have this perception of me that my life is always great. I know all these coping skills, so I can't struggle with depression because I know what I need to do to get through the moment, right? That's not true. And so it's been kind of a, an educational experience for me too, because it just reinforces that social media is, it's like a mask. It's not quite real. Sure, it's real, but there's so much more that goes on in these people's lives and we only see the very best. And so it's been a really good experience for me that way. Absolutely. Well, unfortunately, this is all the time that we have for today. I could talk about this forever. Thank you so <laughs> much for sharing with us and uh, look forward to continue following you. Bye, Kelsey Thank Marie. you. I appreciate it.